At our church, Jesus is Lord. We all make mistakes, but we choose to learn from them. In other words, your past does not dictate your future. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church. We're just doing our best to become our best. You can come as you are, but you won't stay as you are. At our church, it's not about clothes. It's about souls. At our church, we believe in Matthew 25, 35 through 36 ministry, feeding the hungry clothing the naked, visiting the sick. We want you to believe in God, but also want you to know God believes in you. At our church, we're learning to love God with all of our hearts and learning to worship Him with all of our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we are not it. Welcome to our church. Welcome, family, to the High Noon Hot Word. I'm Pastor Lester Lewis, and on behalf of my lovely wife, First Lady Denise Lewis, we welcome you to the fellowship. Thank God for each and every one of you who are connected with us today here on the web worship experience of the Trinity Church. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like or share this link. It helps us to continue to get the word out to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Listen, today we've already had some praise time, and I know that you have been primed and you're ready now. Come on, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to bless this time together, saturate this moment with his presence. Come on, can we do that? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a wonderful day you have provided for us. For that, we are grateful. For your presence, we are grateful. For this moment, we are grateful. And Father, thank you for those who are connected today. Thank you for gathering them uh, in a congregation uh, of online, utilizing technology to be a blessing, to be that conduit to share the word of God. Now, Father, I pray for your people. Whatever they are going through, whatever their issues may be, whatever they find themselves, whatever decision they need to make, whatever direction they need, Father, you are more than enough. And Father, I pray now that uh, they would surrender, they would submit to your wonderful will, knowing that in you that all things are possible. So today, Father, we pray now for your saturation of your spirit upon this time. We pray that you would speak life into your people. We pray that you would bring understanding and wisdom, bring help, bring resources, bring fellowship, bring, bring love, bring families back together, bring healing to those who are hurting. Father, I thank you right now that it's already done. You've already completed the task when Jesus gave his life on the cross. And by his precious blood, the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. So now, Father, we speak life over your people. Let your word go forward and heal the land. Lord, we love you and thank you now for this moment together in Jesus name. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Hey, listen, I am so excited about what God is about to do. And just I, again, during this summertime, we've just been preaching words of inspiration and preaching words that will help and grow your faith. And so today I've got another one of those words. Come on, let's get right into it. Come on, won't you grab your Bibles? Come on, those of you who are online, make sure you go to your, your Bible app. If not, Text is going to be on the screen for you. You ready? All right, let's look at Psalms. Psalms 118. Psalms 118, and we're going to look at verses 5 and 6. A word coming out of the Psalms. Remember, we kind of dealt with the Psalms a little bit, and so last week we're dealing with it still and continuing in it. Uh, Psalms 118, verses 5 and 6. I'm going to read out the New King James Version. That's right, take you old school for a minute. Here we go. The Bible there says, I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Come on, today I just want to inspire you. Today's message is entitled, Make the Call. Yeah, make the call. Come on, church, let's keep praying as we go forward in today's message. The most powerful and moving songs that we are associated with are the ones which happened in real life, are the ones in which we can truly connect with. Uh, in, in other words, not a series of fictitious events, uh, but instances in which I can truly relate to instances in which I've probably gone through myself, instances that I know of that others may have experienced. In other words, the, the, the truly powerful songs in life are those in which the journeys in which others have taken 
parallel to our own journey. In other words, there, 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 was a, there was a series a while back called Behind the Music. And in Behind the Music, what they would do is they would, they would uh, literally find out why certain songs were written. What was the motivation behind them? What, what was the artist experiencing during that time? And why did they write what they wrote? Uh, it's important because it helps to bring a greater understanding to not only the, 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 the way that our, the songs reach us, but the, the true pain, the, the, the true agony, or the true jubilance that, that these individuals went through in order to get this product or this, or this experience out there so others can hear and relate to. So listen to this, church. Listen to this. Psalms, the Psalms, we talked about this last week, and I just want to reiterate it this week. Psalms are filled with real life experiences. You remember now, we talked about how the Psalms are, were poems written to the accompaniment of music. So in other words, these were, these were songs that were literally sung uh, for the, not only the, the enjoyment, but the edification, the education, and for the upliftment of people. And so Psalms are filled with real life experiences, which are close to our own. That's why uh, Psalms, the biggest, the largest book in the Bible, 150 collection of Psalms within them. The writer of Psalms 118, church, is speaking from experience. That's right. The Psalm we just read from. They were speaking from experience. He himself experienced God's ability to do something that needed to be done in his life. Come on. Anybody ever experienced God's ability to do something? Come on. I, I just, I know you're with me on that one. I know you're with me. Uh, he himself experienced God's ability. It, it is also implied, church, that he tried other things that didn't work. Come on, y'all. I hope y'all with me. I hope y'all with me. Has anybody ever tried some other stuff and that didn't work? Come on. I, have you ever tried to put your faith, your hope, your trust in other stuff or other people and it did not work out? I, I, I want you to see this church in Psalms 118, 8 and 9. He says this uh, later on in the Psalms. He says this. It says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. So in other words, he is saying to us, I'm speaking from experience. I've tried other things. I've tried other people and none of them worked. None of them came through like the Lord. Come on, church. I, I just need to talk to somebody on their level right there. Yeah, that's, that's right. You've tried some stuff and it didn't work. So listen to this. The Bible is, is, is very clear and, 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 and very concise. And as it begins to share with us our experiences, it's helping us also to understand how to make it through whatever struggle we find ourselves in. I, I love that. Uh, that's right. It, it, it provides answers. It, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't give you more questions. It provides answers. So look at this. David Church, David, King David, is believed to be the author of this particular psalm. Somebody better say context, Pastor. Give me some context. Uh, Matthew Henry, uh, in his uh, in, in his explanation or in his exploration and, and 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 expounding of the Bible, says that David Church has an abundance of instances where God stepped in at a time of crisis. That's right. King David had went through many times of crisis and. Uh, and each time the Lord stepped in uh, as he invited him. Look, watch this. He writes this psalm, David writes this psalm, as a, 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 a contemplation of not just a single event, but of many events that have happened in his life. That's right. Uh, he he, he kind of uh, writes as a compilation of things that have gone on in his life. And, and, and thus, when it all hit him, yeah, when it all hit him, he was led to express it with a song. That's right. David was a gifted songwriter and a gifted, uh, he played instruments. So, so not only was David a king, but the Bible says that David, David was also a worshiper. Uh, that's right. You, 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 can, you, you can have multi-talents and allow God to utilize them for his glory. So, so here it is, church. Here it is. Here it is. Look at this. Look at this. Here it is. Here it is. You ready? Uh, as it all hit him, when all these experiences came to him, listen to this. The Bible says he made a call. 
Okay, y'all, y'all ain't in. He made a call. That's that's right. Here we go. And the Bible says Psalms 118 and 5, that in our text, it says, I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The word distress, church, let's look at this word, the word distress here. The word distress is, it means a, a picture of constraint. Uh, 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 it's a lack of room. Yeah, wow. A lack of room. In other words, he he's in this tight place. You ever, you, you, it ever get tight for you? Come on. Has life ever gotten tight? Have you, have you ever find yourself in situations where, where, where you are constricted and you and you feel unable to move, you feel unable to think, you feel unable, uh, you, 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 your fear grabs you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. Uh, so look at this. He says, I called upon the Lord in my distress. Wow, wow. In other words, it, it, it also speaks of a, a, a tight defense. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's tight up on you. It's, whatever it is, it's, it's tight. It's everywhere you move, everywhere you go. Uh, I'm in distress, church. Yeah, I just want to talk to some bodies that, whose life you find yourself in some, some distress. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see right now that, 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 that you ought to call him. You have to call on the Lord in everything, uh, in every time. Uh, but, but please hear me. You ought to call him when everything is all right. But aren't you glad you can call on him when you are in distress? Come on. Aren't you glad you can call on him anytime? Uh, that, that, that's the kind of father that we serve. That's the kind of God that we serve, that you can call upon him any time. So the Bible says, first of all, he made the call. Somebody say he made the call. Uh, I need to say to you, make the call. Uh, make the call. What, what, what am I talking about? Call upon the Lord. How do I call upon him? You know how to call upon him. That's right. That's right. You just lift your, your voice and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Yo, yo, anybody, no other help do I know. C come on. Come on. Uh, I, I just want you to see this. I want you to see this, though. Uh, as we move on in the text, as we move on to the text, we're going to let the text do the talking. Come on. The text is talking to you right now. Uh, the text says, that the Lord answered him. That's right. He made the call. And then guess what? The Lord answered him. Watch this. The Lord answered. Uh, he didn't leave him hanging. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how you call folk and, and they just watch and, and you know what they got their phone with them. You know that they 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 they're, they're watching it ring and literally they they're they're letting it go to voicemail or they or, or they're ignoring the call. Come on. God will not leave you hanging. Uh, look at this. Uh, the Lord answered. Wow. The Lord answered. That's what it says. I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me. My goodness, my goodness. It is something to know that the, the, the one who creates the universe and keeps all things in order, the one who has authority, dominion over all things, has enough time to take my call. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 I'm, he's never too busy for me. He's never got too much on his plate. He, he's never bogged down, never overburdened by my call. My goodness. The Lord answered. Somebody say he answered. Uh, yeah, he didn't leave him hanging. And so upon his arrival, church, upon his arrival, God uh, changed some things in the life of David. Upon his arrival, he changed some things. He went from being, look at this, in distress to being in a broad place. Did you hear what I just said? The reason that David used the term in distress, he's in a tight place. But now he's in a broad place when the Lord steps in. Are you, are you with me? So now he goes from being tight to now being free. Yeah, not now, being loose, now being unburdened in a broad place. Uh, so look at this, look at this, look at this. Uh, what, 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 what did God say? Well, first of all, we see that God, first of all, arrived. God, a moment upon his arrival, placed him in a broad place. But then look at this. What, 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 what did God say when he answered? All right, here we go. Here we go. Verse six, verse six. The Lord said, I'm on your side. Mm. My goodness, I'm on your side. A ain't it something when you know that the Lord is on your side? Watch this, church. I, I, I know I, I, I know you're looking at other people. You want uh, this on your, on your side, that on your side. But, but to know that if you got God on your side, that is more important than all things. So look at this. In Romans 8, 31, it says this. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, oh, my God, 
who can be against us? Come on, I, I just need somebody to holler at me right there. I need somebody to shout. You, you feeling, you feeling your spirit right now that God is speaking directly to you. What can we say to that? Come on, if God is for us, who can be against us? Come on, come on. Countless instances in the Bible where we see when God is on the side of those. Uh, and I love the fact that the Bible tells us and shows us that Jesus is often on the side of those who are marginalized, those who have been forgotten, those who absolutely are in distress. And so here, if God be for you, who can be against you, church? Come on. Somebody about to say, I'm on the winning team. Yeah, I'm on the winning team. Uh, so look at this. Look at this. There, 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 there had to come a point, though, church. Watch this. Watch this. David said, I called upon the Lord. He answered me. He put me in a broad place. Yeah, I was in distress. I was in distress. I was tight. But now, look at this. He's freed me. I got space. Come on. Come on. Now watch this. Watch this. There had to come a point where David believed what God said. Are you with me? Are you with me? He had to believe it. See, listen to me. There, there, there's is, is a difference between knowing it and believing it. Yeah, yeah, you can know that the Lord will answer. You can know that you can call upon the Lord. You can know that he will, he'll show up. But what do you really believe what he's able to do? So watch this. When he believed, all his fear disappeared. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? When he believed, all his fear disappeared appeared. I, I love that. I love that. So look at this. Why, why, why is that so important? Here's why he set him in a broad place. And in the, the moment that he set him in that broad place, he said, the Lord is on my side. And because of that, I will not fear. Come on, church. Uh, fear is the opposite of faith. Are y'all praying with me? So, so if fear is the opposite of faith, if I am in fear, then I'm not in faith. And if I'm not in faith, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So church, the, the, the Bible is acknowledging to us that our faith, not, our, not, not just our, our, our knowing, our faith, our, our realization, the, 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 the absolute, uh, 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 I've got the absolute uh, uh, already, the title deed to what is going to take place. It's already mine. It's already given. He believed that he was going to be victorious. And look at this. Look at this. Fear, the word fear, y'all know, we, we, we talk about false evidence uh, appearing real. But please know this, fear allows you to look away from the one who shall provide. Fear is what makes you look away from God. Fear is what, you, is what stops you from trusting in him. So church, what has, what, what has fed your fear? Have you been through those times where things didn't work out? Have you been through those times where, 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 where seemingly... You thought that you were you, you were doing the right thing, but you found out it was the wrong thing. And so now you're, you're, whenever something is about to happen, fear overcomes you. So look at this, church. Look at this. Uh, he says, I, mm, I'm on your side. And the moment that, that, that David believed that, mm, what does it mean to have God on your side? Yeah, yeah. What does it mean to have God on your side? Uh, it, it, it literally means that he's the provider. That he's that, and, 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 and don't don't get don't get mis, 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 misunderstood on this on this text. He is not saying that that I called on God and God joined me. No, 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 no. What happens is we 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 get to the place to where we understand that when the Lord shows up, now it's time for us to join him. Yeah. When we join him, then that's when victory happens. So so look at this. Look at this. Fear will paralyze you. That's what happened. Fear was constraining him. Fear was holding him. Fear was keeping him in doubt. Fear, he was looking at uh, all the, the, the components of, of what he was going through, and it was overwhelming to him. But please know that there is nothing overwhelming for God. All right, I got to get to this thing. Come on, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Come on, somebody say, I'm not going to keep you long, uh, but I will keep you strong. Here we go. Uh, I, I, I look at my problems, then I look at God. Are you seeing what happened there? See, see, when, when you allow fear to take place, you look at your problems, then you look at God. No, uh, but when fear, uh, when, when you look at it properly, uh, when we look at God, then look at what we're facing, we realize, listen to this, we realize we, we, we're on the winning team, that, that we, he's greater than anything we can go through. Uh, so listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. So, 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 so who do you call 
when you find yourself in distress. I, I told you I'm not going to keep you long today. I was going to keep you strong today. Uh, so look at this. Who do you call? David decided I'm going to call upon the Lord. But don't miss this. I told you in, in earlier ver in, in, in early in the message that he tried other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we have to be careful uh, uh, not allowing other things to become more prominent in our lives. So look at this. Is there something in your life mm, that you need to call upon the Lord for? I believe that all of us are at some point in our lives have something that we need to call upon the Lord for. So what can man do to me if the Lord is on my side? I just want to talk to you about this. It's, it's, it's time to make the call, church. It's time to stop walking in fear, church. It's time for us to stop allowing the, the things of life to overwhelm us. It's time for us to stop stressing. It's time for us to move away from those things. David went through experiences. These experiences brought him to the place to where he recalled that whenever I went through things and I called upon the Lord, he answered me and he put me in a broad place. Come on, church. God has a broad place waiting for you. God has a place of abundance, a place, a place in which you can stretch out, a place in which not only dreams and visions can come through, but, but a place where you are able to be an encouragement to others. See, when I'm constrained, uh, I'm so busy trying to work out my stuff that I don't have time to try to figure out what it is you need. So, church, I say to you today, you are. God's child. And if you're God's child, if you call upon him, make that call. That's right. Just, just bow down and pray. Just seek the Lord with all your heart. Allow him to have access to you. Speak life over your situation and say, Father, I call upon you now and I thank you that you are able to handle this situation that I'm in. And then ask and seek his direction. Now, not mind you, the Bible says he put me in a broad place. He, he put me. He put me. He put me. He put me. That's important because we try to put ourselves. We, 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 try, we try to get out of things ourselves. We must trust in the Lord so that he, allow him to put us. Allow him to position you for the performance of his promises. Allow God to do what he said he will do. So today, church, uh, I just want to leave you with this final principle. Mm. If he didn't want you to call, he would not have given you the avenue of prayer to talk to him. My God. Ooh, if he didn't want you to call, he would not have given you the avenue of prayer to talk to him. Come on, let's talk to him right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you in prayer. We call upon you, whether it be in our distress, whether it be in, in, our, in our broad places, whether it be in, in good times or bad times, we call upon you. It is, it, is a, it is not just something that we do uh, just here or there, but Father, thank you that it has become now our lifestyle to call upon your name. Thank you for in this moment right now where we're worshiping, where we're hearing your word, that we have learned from the experience of David and what he went through and how he wrote a song about it. Now he, he, he simply sang praises about it to you. And Father, thank you that we have a song, that our lives can reflect and people can, can relate to what you we're going through and what you have brought us through and what you're able to do in our lives. So now we speak life over your people. And I declare that the word of God will inspire and encourage and help others to call upon you and make the call and know that you will answer and bring them out of distress into a broad place. Father, we ask it all and thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right there. And let's give God some excellent praise because he is worthy of praise. That's right. Hey, listen, I want to, uh, before we get out of here, before we go, and before we go into the offering time, the offering time is coming up. Information is there on the screen for you. Make sure you, before you, before you go, make sure you sow. Uh, that's right. Sowing keeps your harvest growing. That's right. Your giving is important. It is part of your faith. So make sure you sow your seed today. God loves what? A cheerful giver. Giving not because you have to, not because you're being made to, because you're in distress to, but because God has freed you to. Amen. 
All right. Before you do that, but make sure uh, First Lady and I, are, I told we we've been telling you a couple for the last couple of weeks. We have uh, a new ministry that we have been, been presenting and putting out. Uh, as you know, First Lady and I are, are absolutely committed to the growth, increase and strengthening of marriages. And so marriage is important because it is important to God. It's so important that it, it was the first it is the first organizational thing that he put into the life of man that's right man needed he the family was more important than any other thing so uh family is how the world was populated family is how god able was able to bless in fact we are uh, a family under him he is our father we're his children so family is important so marriage is is invaluable and so uh first lady and i have, have been working on uh, marriage mentors that's right uh the information is there on the screen uh, make sure you visit us. Uh, we got, uh, got a little TikTok page, and also uh, you can go to our website, visit, and find out more information about it. But we just want you to know that marriages is all about, and, and we're so we're, we're encouraging marriages to be strong and be strengthened. So make sure you join us. Make sure you, you tell somebody. Make sure you share the link and, and let them do some of the TikTok challenges that we have uh, to help strengthen and strengthen communication and strengthen the knowledge of who they are. And so First Lady and I are working on that. You guys, make sure you make sure you, you, you go on, leave some, some stuff in the comments for us. Let us know you're there. Make sure you subscribe to it, all right? Uh, all right, God bless. Amen. Listen, uh, I, I, I absolutely realize and thank God for this moment. And so I want to get, get us out of here. And before we go, make sure you don't forget to sow, all right? And it is our blessing. It is our prayer. And we know that it is God's will that you be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. We'll see you next time on the High Noon Hot word. I believe your harvest is coming tonight. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. And let's call it in tonight. Come on, calling your harvest. Calling your harvest. Hey, it's coming. It's Supply every need tonight. Somebody on a loose increase. We bind lack. Every time I give. supply every need.
everybody clap your hands and rejoice over the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his name.